Renee's a teenager who loves to party. There's drugs and, of course, a bucket load of booze. Renee, you really need to change your attitude. No, I don't. <clears throat> My attitude's fine the way it is. Things have actually become worse. That worries me. I'm, um... I'm just at the end of it now. I've... yeah. But I won't give up on her. What I love to do is to sleep, eat, and get wasted. I love the feeling when I've smoked weed. Uh, you get the drink tonight, young lady? I got caught stealing. I got fired from my job because I'd rather be at the beach. <laughs> she pinched me. You just pinched me. Yeah, that's because he was being a little... The 17-year-old's off-the-rails behaviour has led to nights in the cells. Now, with eight other kids to worry about, the solo mum can't take much more. It's to the point where I love her and I want to help her, but I just, I can't be bothered. At the moment, I can't help myself. No. For Renee's travelling companion, David, this trip is a last-ditch effort to straighten him out. Earlier this year, his mum moved to England, but with no work visa, David's had to stay here and move back in with Dad. What are you doing tonight? Going to the Ruska thing in town. Are you coming home tonight? Yeah. Too far away. I always think when he rings me up, I'm the last number on the list. He's tried to, he's tried to do, uh, he's tried to do everything else. Well, I'd imagine you'd be just sleeping on someone's couch. Is that right? Where are you saying? I'm not sure. No, no. Mm. Why do you want to live like that? <sighs> Why do you have to get on the piss and it's too hard to get back here? The thing that pisses me off the most about living here is I'm not allowed people here. I can't make lots of noise and it's just, uh, it's counterproductive. His dad got him a job with his uncle, but like most things, it didn't last. He wasn't showing up on time. He started becoming unreliable. I just woke up one morning and was like, I don't feel like going to work today. I sent my own son, people think, you cruel bastard. And hey, I, I did it because he couldn't do it, but I, it needed to be done. And he can't go back to school because they don't want him there either. I got kicked out of school for not attending. I thought I had better shit to do than be at school. He's been in trouble with the law. I stole my auntie's car and I took it for a joyride and then I decided to hotbox it. <laughs> you just don't want me here. It's not about that. I think he's very intelligent, but it's like he chooses not to use it and chooses not to apply it. I want to see him enjoy life and excel and do the best, best he possibly can. I think my dad sees me as, as, a, as a shit, really. Just a badly behaved teenager. So I ask where you're going? Oh, yeah. Africa. <laughs> Africa. <laughs> wow. You, you sure you're ready for it? Sure, I'll be fine. Yes, in just 20 hours, David and Renee will land in Pretoria, South Africa, to live, play and school within these four walls the family call home. For kids growing up in this city, breaking the rules can be dangerous. You find that you have to have a disciplined child, an undisciplined child that just does what he wants. It can actually cost him his life. Disobedience is a very bad thing, and we, we won't tolerate that. Yarks and Debbie firmly control their four children's lives. Their Christian beliefs form the basis of their parenting. The Bible says, um, teach your children in the ways of the Lord since they are very young. And also that you should discipline a child. It drives the sin out of his heart. Honour your father and your mother. Those are very good principles. It must be very fine, very small. If Lawrence is disobedient um, and we feel that, that he needs discipline, you remove that bit which is so important to him in life. And then what we find is he would comply immediately. <laughs> 
and Yarks is the one who decides what the rules are and the punishment if they are not obeyed. The Bible teaches that the, the father is the head of the home. What I, what I say, I expect it to be followed. Which will be an interesting concept for our teens to get their heads around. Although these fences are quite intense. Barbed wires. ADT armed response. Shit. Holy fuck. <laughs> Standing at attention. <laughs> yeah, I'm shooting myself now. Hello, David. Yeah. Welcome to us. This is my Hi, wife, David. Debbie. Nice to meet you. Hello. Hello. Welcome to our house. This is my Thank wife, you. Debbie. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Well, come closer. Come along. But it doesn't take Renee and David long to forget just where they are and why they are here. Hi uh, guys, one of the rules in our property is no smoking. So uh, we'll be sharing the rules with you just now. So that's a, a rule that you'll have to abide by whilst with us this week. So like not even it? going on the street and smoking? You are um, under 18 and it's actually illegal in our land to, uh, to smoke for, for any person under the age of, of 18. So I need you to, to put that out right now. I'm 18. Hey? I'm 18, 18, but you're on my premises. So you're not allowed to smoke here. Right now. David and Renee have only just arrived in Pretoria, South Africa, and already things have gotten off to a pretty bad start. Uh, guys, one of the rules in our property is no smoking. So I need you to, to put that out right now. Right now. As in now. Renee, that includes you. <laughs> Could I have another piece of gum? <laughs> There's no way I can go the whole week without smoking. Oh. <laughs> I can't wait to hear what the rules are. Right, Renee, David, we have uh, a list of rules here. I saw him pull it out and there was six pages of rules. <laughs> the first of the rules is uh, the, the free choice rule. You're free to, to disagree with our rules, but if you do not obey the rules that we have, then there's a penalty to it, and the penalty is that you won't be able to accompany us at the end of the weekend to the African farm, which is a reward for good behavior. Second rule uh, we already had a skirmish about, and that is the smoking rule. The third rule is uh, that there will be no consumption of alcohol. That was it. That was enough. We get out of bed as a family at 6 o'clock in the morning, why do we have to get out of bed at six o'clock? Because of the schedule of our day. He's like, Nazi, with all those rules. Nazis probably didn't have that many rules. Breakfast starts at seven o'clock in the morning. If you are not at the breakfast table by five minutes past seven, you miss out on breakfast. If you were late for breakfast, you skip out on your meal until lunchtime. If you skip the breakfast time, which means you probably skip the, the quiet time that you have as a family, then you also skip lunch. So your first meal will be supper. Eight o'clock schoolwork starts. That's the time when you start learning. Can't we do our own thing during the day? Not at all. I didn't know rules like this existed. Well, those kids have like no life living those rules. Very soon now, We'll go and show you your accommodation, your rooms, and we putting you in the rooms right next to, to our main bedroom. It's because we want to check up on you. Renee, she's go, probably going to be the one to debate more vigorously in, in, in time to come. David was a bit stormed. She was a bit rebellious and not really taking part. He was like on his own planet. Right, guys, before we show you in, I would like you to hand over your cigarettes uh, or any other contraband that you might have in your cases. Yeah. You don't have any, any open packets? 
Ready? Oh, yeah, it's empty. Okay, all right. I trust you then that you will not smoke. Them. If you still have something on you, I trust that you won't smoke it yet. I'm concerned about confiscating their cigarettes. Some people can become quite aggressive uh, when they suffer withdrawal symptoms. So I expect a bit of conflict around there. And Renee is already looking for trouble. Me and David knew they would ask us for our cigarettes. That's why we had half and kept half for them to take. I thought I'd try and be sneaky eh, and give them the open pack. No, got my cigarettes and my shoes. I just miss my little sisters. I miss my mum, like, yelling at me. It's really, like, done my head in. <laughs> it's really annoying, and but hopefully it'll get better as the day goes. That's the first fry. But the best is yet to come for Renee, because she is also expected to cook. When chopping onions, it, you, should, you shouldn't actually take hours to do it. And while it seems minor, the dig about taking so long to chop onions is enough to send this troubled teen packing. What do you think, what's, what we are do to make you feel better? Send me home. <laughs> send you home. After one day. Hmm, is it that bad here? Yeah. Hmm? No. So why, why do you think going home would would be good for you. Because I have my family and my boyfriend. And then I'll be able to smoke me what I want. Is it the smoking that's getting to you? <laughs> hmm? Is it too much? Yeah. What started it off? Right, when it, like, mm -hmm. why I started smoking, hmm. to be cool. Renee is a soft person and I think she's a sensitive person. I think she's a person that hurts inside. But she's an individual that needs a lot of tender, loving care. We'll sleep. I'll come and check on you to, to see if you're okay. All right. I heard a call for help and we have to respond. It's 6 a.m. Hey. Oh, you're up already. Yeah. And for both kids, rule number one get up or go hungry. Morning, it's time to rise and shine. David was completely disorientated. He's really tired. But I would warn him about the consequences that he wouldn't get breakfast if he keeps on sleeping. David, are you ready? Are you decent? Yeah. Morning. Morning. Wow, that's another person. That looks good. I'm proud of you. <laughs> All awake, bright and shiny. I bought you some coffee. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. You're a champion. Oh, pleasure. Well done. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, fuck me. What I really need is a fucking cigarette. <laughs> And without a second thought, David seizes the opportunity to do just that. And what are you doing? Well, I would have gone outside, but there's a big... No, but the house rules say that you're not supposed to smoke. Give me that cigarette. The house rules say no smoking. I'm, I'm disappointed in you, David. Where are your cigarettes? Where have you stashed them away? Because we're going to take them all away now. Pardon? I am. We really trusted you that you wouldn't smoke and that you wouldn't have some stashed away somewhere. I'm not giving you the rest of my cigarettes. <laughs> Fuck their point of view. I smoke, and that's me. We did say that we trusted you not to smoke again, but uh, obviously um, that is something that we can't do at the moment. Uh, because of that, I uh, want to search your bags for any more cigarettes that's available. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to do that behind your back. You need to give me permission for that. 
Um, if you're not willing to give me permission for that, then unfortunately you'll have to go to your room now while we all have breakfast. And we'll call you when we're done. And then you'll skip breakfast this morning. No, yeah, fine. I'll come for breakfast. Come to search my vents. Okay. That's say breakfast is probably more important than my cigarette. I think it is all just a bit of a laugh being here. A bit of a piss take that their rules are so intense. You can join us for breakfast. See? Um, just for your benefit, I've put down the rules of the house again just to remind you if you want to read them. <coughs> I think Renee's got two or three packs. We can't really chain smoke, so that should last the week, I guess, hopefully, unless she gets caught as well, and then it'll turn to sh <laughs> After breakfast, Debbie becomes the teacher, as the kids are homeschooled. It's all part of the hands-on approach to everything in their children's lives. I'd like you to have a look at this maths. It's um, some of the maths that Lawrence actually does. To raise a child, means that you must nurture the child. You must identify the talents. I need to quickly pop out for a while and I will leave all of you to your work. And when I come back, I will see and check what you've done. Okay. Thanks, teacher. Pleasure. Yeah. For some odd reason, I'm actually enjoying it. I just want to go out for a smoke, so the faster I can do this, the faster I can go out. So do you want to go to the farm? Yeah, farm has a choice there to go to, I reckon. And do you think you'll get there by disobeying every time my mum and dad turns in their backs? Uh, probably not. They're not doing it for themselves, they're doing it for you. Yeah, well, it's not that easy to exactly just come here and you guys expect us to give up straight away. Now, that really fucks me off. Done everything they've told us to do, but I'm not going to give up my smoking. It's a familiar scene. David and Renee do something they know is wrong, but go ahead anyway. Algebra to be attending to. Don't you have no smoking to be attending to? A wise and powerful lines. Can you please stop lecturing me, mate? It's really starting to f me off. Oh, no. Why did you smoke? You need to understand that we just, we can't give up, well, I know I can't, probably the same with no. you, but can't give up smoking straight away. Like, it's hard. It's, Hard, especially when I enjoy smoking. I understand it's um, quite terrifying to just stop smoking within a day or two, and, and I understand that. But I'm not happy about the fact that you're hiding stuff on my property. I'm actually sharing my, my home with you. We're giving you the best that we can. When Yaks comes back tonight, we're going to have to discuss this. Yeah. I felt genuinely disappointed because I believed them. I didn't think that they would hide stuff from us. I sort of trusted them. I was a bit naive. The teens wait for Yarks to come home and deliver his verdict. You can chuck that in something with, like, pasta. It should just look like a stir fry. So it's pretty easy. Yeah. But their sudden angelic behaviour isn't fooling him. One bit. It's only when they know they've been caught out, then suddenly they become good. And the important thing here is that they actually learn what the consequences to your actions are. David, Renee, um, Lawrence, you as well, can we just have a session, please? <clears throat> David, Renee, when I got home, my wife told me about what happened, that uh, you'd been caught smoking again. And for that reason, you have to apologize to my wife. I'm sorry okay. for offending you. Renee? Sorry. And then David, I also learned that you had insulted Lauren severely. And that is something that upset me greatly. A lack of respect is something that we will not tolerate. So I need you to apologize to Lawrence right now. I already apologized. Yeah, did, apologize. did you apologize? Mm. Okay. 
When you came here, one of the rules that we laid down from the beginning was that there is a reward at the end of this period that you would experience an African farm visit. Sadly, um, we've decided not to have the farm visit. Furthermore, you two will now go to your rooms and we will not be calling you for dinner. So you watched us make dinner? <clears throat> well, it's... You're taking the piss up. We just cooked you guys all dinner and now we're not allowed any. David, that is enough I've spoken. You're taking the piss. Of the 50 rules you had down on that stupid piece of paper, I've broken one. I think that's pretty decent effort, to be honest. I'm really disappointed that I'm not going to the farm. And I'll go back home and I'll tell Mum and I will regret it then, but I'm not going to give up my smoking. It's a new day and Debbie is trying a new approach with the kids. Okay. Okay, this is where um, the less fortunate white people in South Africa end up. She has brought them to a camp for homeless people as she wants to remind David and Renee about thinking of others. It's sad, eh? mm. oh, you can see, I don't know if you saw the little kids, but they sort of look underfed. Yeah. Seeing all the children wandering around, that, that was actually, yeah, it was quite heartbreaking. Eh? They didn't have anything at all. I want to say that the kids will grow up and be successful and all that, but I don't reckon they will. I reckon they'll probably just grow up and be like their parents in white settlements. The people that live here don't really get any help apart from donations from the community, churches, you know, welders that will just arrive and give them clothing. But as you can see, I think they've got barely got enough to keep ends together. Like, I'm so thankful for what I have. Just seeing, you know, today, it's just like, I want to give more. You know, I don't want to be such, like, a spoiled brat. Like, I just want to have the things that I actually need, not that I want. Since the are sharing their lives with the teens, Renee wants to show Debbie a little of what her life is like back home. Is that you? Is that you? Oh! No! No, that's me. Is that... But what, what are you doing? Mm. I can't believe it's you, Renee. It looks like a different person. Yeah, I was partying. Then. Do you think it's a good idea to put a party photo on Facebook? Yeah. To advertise yourself in such a way? Yeah, so people know who I am. Really am. Do you think you'll get a high-profile job like this? And that's why I don't show heaps of people my Facebook. But it's a, it's like a public thing. If I do a search on you, it will come up. I think we can really, perhaps, get much better shots of you. Than... I can change it if you want me to. Oh, that's cool. That'll be cool. You too. Oh, here. Yeah. Here's me and my mum. And yes. what do you think? If you look at your mom and you look at the relationship that you have with her and you think of your mom. I think my mum is she's an amazing woman. And it just sucks that I've been such a little shit towards her. Did you actually see that you can add more responsible tasks to the daily routine or just like take the burden off your mom a bit? Yeah. Like, you've helped me out so much already. Like, I just want to go home and get up early in the mornings with the kids and help Mum out and... I do think this family can help me. Yeah, a lot. Like, I'm already cooking and cleaning and I don't do that at home. I just want to just talk to you. OK. Um, you guys said 
that we're not going on the farm visit. If we didn't smoke for the rest of now and all of tomorrow, would we still be able to go? The kids were really excited to go to the farm. I do feel selfish, and smoking is a fucked up reason to not go. Our Kiwi teens have had time to think about the consequence of their actions. It would be the first time in a long time, and they are here to apologise. But will Yarks accept? If we didn't smoke for the rest of now and all of tomorrow, would we still be able to go? Wow, David, I'm, I'm absolutely, absolutely stunned. Very honoured for you to come and say this to us. I understand that, that you have a craving for it. I, I smoked for eight years myself, and we're not here to rehab you. So what we've decided is, from now on forward, if provided, that you now sincerely handed over the last cigarettes that you've stashed away, Debbie and I will choose times that we will allow you to smoke. What we've decided is to remove a barrier between us so that we can get to each other, so that we can actually talk. For us as a family to really share who we are and for us to get to know us, each other really, it is so important for us to, to take you in, into Africa, into the bush. So we've decided that we will go. It's quite exciting, eh? The best thing that could happen on the farm would be if I got to see a leopard. <laughs> Seeing a leopard would be choice. The wilds of Africa are a welcome break from the confinement of the Lemma 1000 square metre home. See, over here they've been lying, lying down, down again. Is that like one of their footprints? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a big one. That's yeah. a big one. Oh, right. yeah. There's nothing like this in New Zealand. Being here is like a once in a lifetime opportunity. And for Yarks is a chance to spend some one on one time with David. Hi, right, David. I'm going to give you a bullet to load. Just insert it, don't load it before you're leaning. Mm -hmm. um, just put it in there and press it in. Okay, and just press it in. That's right. Keep it open. Keep it open yeah. and lean forward on the vehicle. And just feel when you keep your finger off the trigger. Um, and you put your finger to the front there. Don't put it inside yet. The moment you feel ready, you can put your finger on the trigger and you can squeeze it. It's quite loud, eh? <laughs> <laughs> David, I have to say you are an amazing natural. <laughs> this, is, this is really... I've, I've taken many, many people out to the bush. City boys and guys, and they... They just, they just don't have that thing that you have. It's, it's awesome. Being told by Yucks that I was a natural at shooting was pretty, pretty awesome. It's a pretty good feeling. Perfect. Yucks is a great guy. He's got the whole work and play thing down pat. He's got it perfect. He works real hard. Then you come out here and you see a, a different side. He comes out here and he relaxes and has fun. Two days from now, You've gone your way and, and we carrying on here. But I hope there's something that you take away with you, that you realize that you've got such awesome, awesome, awesome talent, natural talent. And, yeah. and, and you must remember that and build on it. He probably has helped me look, look in, inside myself and like, see things that I didn't think were there. Is this something that you've ever done with your dad before? No. Something like this? No. Okay. When you get home, get the old man and go and do stuff. Okay? This is fun. <laughs> you can have fun with, with us old folk. I haven't really done anything with my dad at all. We don't do stuff father and son normally do. I hardly ever see him, and when I do, it's because I've done something wrong, and he's got to try to lay down some discipline. If everything was perfect, I'd want the sort of relationship where I can just go have a beer with my dad and go watch the rugby and just chill out and have a chat. 
that'd probably be the best. <laughs> I don't know, I don't feel at the moment that I could, because it'd just turn into an argument. Jesus. David, it's time to face up to your reality, being chosen to fly to South Africa. It's not a reward you've earned. It is actually a sad recognition of the poor decisions you have made and the associated behaviour. You need to take this opportunity to find out who you are as a person and what you want out of your life. You seem content to select the lowest rung on the ladder because it requires the least effort. Failing to finish all your education will limit your employment options. A lot of young Maori men can't even get jobs. I don't think you are leading a healthy lifestyle and I'm also concerned you'll end up making poor decisions which will constrain your choices in life. It's fair to say your family has had enough. What would Nan think of her grandson if she was alive? I think you and I both know what she would say. Please think about this. Talking about Nan, that's... I don't like doing that. It made me feel quite shit. <laughs> and confront some emotions. Your choices and behaviour have been breaking your mother's heart. We all love you, son, but what you've been doing is not fair on your family and your friends. I'll always support you if you need help. But it's time to confront some tough questions in your life. Only you can answer these questions, and those decisions will craft your life's opportunities. Lots of love, Dad. Made me feel quite shit. <laughs> Talking about men, that's. I don't like doing that. Or mum. I love my mum heaps. I'm gutted that she's not in New Zealand anymore, but I guess. I guess it was good because I always. I always fall on her when it turns to the shit, and now I can't, so. I've got to try, try to take responsibility. Probably a better person for having come here and done this, because it made me realise like <laughs> that it's not, yeah, it's not all a game. It's just, it's pretty serious, serious things that you can't always take the piss. Aye, aye. One wadi. This African experience has been more than Kiwi kids David and Renee could ever imagine. From this trip, I've learned pretty much everything's up to me. I know I'm going to stay like this. Like I'm already planning what I can do when I go home. You know, I'm going to get up early in the morning and help Mum out with the kids to get ready for school. And I'm just. Oh, it's all in my head what I can do when I get home, and I'm actually excited to do all of that. The most important thing I got from this, things you do, like having schedule and having responsibility within this thing, is like caring more about things and caring more about your actions towards others and how it does have positive outcomes. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Renee was very emotional in the beginning of the week and I sort of saw her also blossoming into a relaxed person. <laughs> I would say to her mom that she's got an amazing daughter that needs a lot of emotional nurturing and care. A, also a very creative child. <laughs> that young man has so much potential. He has so many gifts. But what David needs is for somebody to help him to unlock it because it's still in a cage. Bye. I certainly hope that I will see both of them again and that I would be able to congratulate them on their achievements. I'm really, really excited to see my family, especially my mum. I'm going to let her know that I am a changed person and just that I'm sorry 
I'm hoping she is motivated, that she has respect. Hi. Hi, Mum. Hi, <laughs> <Right>, sweetie. <laughs> How are you? Good. So, was it a life-changing experience? I like to say it was, but we have to find out. I hope to have you back. Cuddle. Love you, Mum. I love you. Sweetheart. Oh, did you hear my back? Sorry for being a bitch. A little bitch. I was amazed she actually said to me that she was sorry. She doesn't say anything like that. I didn't realise that I had, like, everything I want, pretty much. That you've taken a lot for granted. Yeah. yeah. It was meant to be a life-changing thing for Renee, and I think it has been. I'm excited now to see um, where she's going to go. Proud of her. And you know why I think I got along with that boy so much, David? Because he reminded me so much of Josh. <laughs> he even looked like you, I reckon. I kind of feel weird, like a different person. I'm a new Renee, a nice Renee.